emerging diseases that have been around for a long time, but we see it skyrocketing now, are multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's disease, and ALS. Many of you know it as Lou Gehrig's disease. Uh, this is also in part coming from contamination in the environment, your epigenetics, what we expose ourselves to. A poor diet, which allows your immune system to be weakened and any onslaught of disorder to come in. But in the case of each of these diseases, I think it's a little different. With multiple sclerosis, as an example, we actually think there's a microbial component. Uh, somehow in mainstream medicine, they don't read their own research and literature, which I happen to. Uh, there were studies done over the years where they saw that there were certain populations in certain geographic locations that had spectacularly high amounts of MS. What this is indicative of is there was a contaminant that spread through that population. Why MS is indiscreet. It doesn't hit one kind of person or at a certain age or boy or girl. Uh, it basically hits indiscreetly a population. So for sure it's a contaminant. Uh, I don't know really what it is, to be honest with you. It's either a bacteria or a virus that seeds inside the human brain and then slowly but surely degradates, eats the brain. And so uh, you have to get the immune system involved in that. So everything we've ever done at Hippocrates uh, for the last six decades has literally been about boosting and strengthening the immune system. Now, up until last year, uh, it was interesting because if you'd even talk to me and I pride myself on understanding anatomy and biochemistry and physiology, I would have told you there was one very, very primitive immune system cell in the brain. Guess what? Thank God we were all wrong. Now we actually have photographed and know and have documented, not we, but the brilliant workers in the biological scientific community, that your lymph system, which all of the uh, lymph cells, immune system cells, are in the brain too. So we have similarly to what the body does to attack and prevent a disease and reverse a disease in the brain. So now if we can start to do everything right in general for our body, uh, thought and positive thought and positive food and positive movement and positive supplementation and positive natural uh, medicines if possible, uh, and in some cases, by the way, the use of pharmaceutical medicines, when somebody's in a severe crisis, that may be part of the scenario. Uh, when we do that, then we can start to work at preventing the growth of this. Uh, next, when you add this in with heavy metal toxins and poisons, you know, we, uh, it's a catch-22. We don't want to put people with MS into a lot of heat, but if we heat their body up and start to detox a little bit and use copious amounts, large amounts of algae, chlorella uh, being a great, great example for you, uh, we see it like a magnet attached to some of these heavy metals and chemicals and start to take it out of the body. Uh, the second one, Parkinson's disease, we'll talk about. That's a dopamine deficiency in the brain. And uh, when people come to us with this, our medical team not only injects glutathione into their body, uh, also give them oral glutathione and inhaled glutathione through vaporization, amazingly effective on helping dopamine amazingly effective on helping what is called the mitochondria, the brains and the energy source of the cells. And then we put them in hyperbaric chambers and of course we change their diet and we start to use targeted supplementation depending upon what we find with this wide array of diagnostic, medical diagnostic technology and very advanced diagnostic technology we've used for decades at Hippocrates. Um, and we see people be able to halt MS and Parkinson's uh, disease. Uh, ALS, the same, early stages. Uh, these are all degenerative diseases, things that break down the nerves or the muscles of the body or combinations of all of those things. Uh, now, the sad news is that late stages in all of these have never seen spectacular changes uh, because the breakdown has become so critical, uh, you're not going to renew uh, the body. But believe me, don't give up on this. Uh, in our recent magazine, we had three people who report how they reversed full blast multiple sclerosis. And, uh, you know, case after case we see uh, with people who stop the progression of Parkinson's and ALS. Uh, and so, please don't ever give up just because one community of healthcare professionals who probably care but just don't know tell you there's nothing that can be done.
So we're going to go through a list of problems that are almost chronologically the way it works. Uh, many people out there have constipation, and this in great part came because your mother did not breastfeed you, uh, that she started to force feed you food within days or hours after you were born, and when you put solid food into a body that doesn't have the enzymes to digest it, it starts to distort and contort the digestive and elimination canal. So most of us started, including me, with a very bad digestive and elimination canal. Uh, then you start to put non-foods in, you know, meats of all kinds stay in the body three days. They're never completely digested. They're not complete proteins the way we choose to eat them. And that starts to fester, for the lack of a better term. Dairy, which is not meant for human body, but for instance, if you take uh, milk from a cow, uh, you're supposed to become a thousand pound creature from that. And so, by the way, that's not healthy for you. It puts hormones into the body that ought not to be there. And we're not even talking about the uh, systemic use of hormones they inject into these animals. We're talking about the natural hormones that are there. Uh, then you do what I did. I mean, my favorite foods, uh, beyond those two I ate a lot of that I just mentioned, uh, was ice cream and cake and candy and all of the sweets. And that starts to create an abomination of distortion within the intestinal tract, the digestive tract. And now on top of that, we put chemicals inside of it. We put stress inside. You may notice uh, when you get stressed, it's hard for you to eat. It's hard for you to poop. On top of that, we start to be dehydrated. We now know that most of us listening today, 60% of us are dehydrated. And you may notice when you drink adequate amounts that the flow of fecal matter comes out. When you stop drinking, it's contracted. So think about this. Now we end up in a situation where you probably have a lot of gas, a lot of bloating, and you could end up with the first phase of serious problems. And the first phase is called either diverticulosis or diverticulitis. When you look at the intestinal wall, this is actually like inverted pimples, pus-filled, disease-filled little inversions inside of the intestinal tract. And if that's not taken care of because you keep eating fried food and all these things that ought not to be eaten and you stay under stress and you drink soda pop and all of the other nonsense that we've now discussed, uh, that becomes something either called colitis or Crohn's disease. And that's where it really becomes a masterful disease at that point. Now, uh, you're going to be told that this is a chronic disease by mainstream authorities. They're going to tell you that there's no way that you can ever reverse that. And I can't really remember how many people I've seen reverse it. It's been that many. Now, what you have to do is stop the nonsense, all of that. You've got to be brave enough to do the opposite of what you're being told. Now, when you eat raw food and healthy green food, when you have that, it's going to be very disruptive. You're going to feel, oh, pain and gas because your body doesn't have the ability to function anymore. So you can't just go out and eat a salad like I would. You would basically make it healthy in a way that your body at that particular state of disrepair can accept it. So raw juices, you may have to blend foods. We may use particular type of foods that have mucus laginous medicinal qualities to it that go in and coat the intestinal tract. And slowly but surely, we may work with anal implantation of certain kinds of grasses, the juices obviously, and certain kind of herbal uh, medicines and treatments. And slowly but surely, people can come back. It's very, very, very rarely that you cannot help to reverse that disease on your own. The other thing is that uh, mainstream medicine's not always bad. And you have a handful of very courageous doctors in allopathic medicine today that started to realize that when you throw off the intestinal tract like that, all of the flora, the garden that should be inside of you, of good healthy bacteria, is gone. It's completely gone. So they came up with a very ingenious idea that sounds a little strange, but it works, by the way. They said, well, how about if we took fecal matter out of really healthy people, and they choose babies and young ones before they've been corrupted, and we implant it into the intestine of people with Crohn's disease. Well, guess what? They're getting spectacular results. This is going to be a future science that I'm a big fan of, by the way, that's going to expedite this process, healthy diet. Now, you can't be doing that and then continuing on your patterns of badness. You know, you have to be good at that point. So you combine these two things. Uh, it's so important, uh, MIT knows it, and MIT has a poop bank. I jokingly call it the poop bank. And they're in the process now of categorically deciding which fecal matter is, is best for which person 
and they're probably going to find ways to multiply that in laboratory settings. So there is a lot of hope for you. Don't buy into what 9 out of 10 doctors are telling you today. Uh, look at this, read at it, get on the Hippocrates type of lifestyle, chew your food. At first you may have to blend it, juice it, find out what supplements can help you, what medicinal qualities are in certain kinds of herbs. Fibromyalgia is one of these disorders that we see that's neurological and I think microbial where in fact you actually see in the muscles of the body you have inflammation, infection, and we see this able to be reversed in the wide majority of people who contract it. And this is really about detoxifying the system, alkalizing the body, moving the body, and that's done not only through lifestyle and diet, consumption of pure liquids and fluids, also the utilization of particular targeted supplementation, depending upon what we find diagnostically with our medical team on that particular person's uh, body. Uh, the second thing that you have to understand is that these newer problems uh, are often catch basin terms. That fibromyalgia may not be one particular type of inflammatory disorder, it may be an infection in the body that when a doctor sees you, and I don't blame the doctor because there's so overwhelming amounts of disorders that are happening today. Uh, they put you into that category and they give you a particular medicine which may backfire because it's really not for what your, what your problem is. Gluten intolerance or gluten allergies as we know in the more chronic state of that, celiac disease, is more common than you think. Uh, after pondering this for a long time, I think about six to seven out of us do not react well to gluten. Gluten is a protein that you find in many of the grains, the most common grains you find. Uh, I grew up, besides eating horribly bad meats and dairy food, etc., I ate a lot of pizza. Uh, can you imagine how much gluten there must be in pizza? That's why it's all gooey. <laughs> and bread, I mean, the, the breads that most of us eat, including the whole grain organic breads, have gluten in it. So gluten comes from not only wheat, so we say wheat allergies or wheat intolerance, it comes from rye, it comes from oats, it comes from barley, and it's mixed into a lot of processed foods. Uh, gluten sort of pulls things together. And so this is something to avoid, and even if you're not one of the six or seven out of 10 people that react to it, some very, very poorly. Some people have uh, chronic pain. Uh, they weaken their overall body and, and create the opportunity for other diseases to come in from this. Uh, mental illness, sadness, depression, I've seen, and this is not an exaggeration, these are common, common things that we see from these allergic reactions because it changes the body and brain chemistry in this. So you want to avoid that. I would say avoid it. You know, today, thank goodness, and they're robbing us, but there are non-gluten uh, type of choices. And as this becomes more prevalent, you're going to see literally the costs go down, and try to avoid eating bread to begin with. You know, I'm not a big fan of, of doing that. Sprouted grain is completely different. That's where you take a little grain that they make into a powder and put some yeast in and put some sugar in and blow it up into a cake, a pie, an ice cream, a donut, or a bread. Not healthy for you, ever. Same exact grain, you can soak, sprout, it becomes a mother plant. Amazingly healthy for you. By the way, you can take wheat, even if you have celiac disease, germinate it, sprout it, and it's no longer having the gluten in it. The gluten actually converts over to amino acids and you no longer react to it. Isn't that amazing? So something that is bad is often bad because of the way we choose to consume it, the way we choose to eat it. And so recognize that this is a, a big, big problem. A lot of people have it. Doctors are finally waking up to this. And I keep saying doctors, I'm talking about natural doctors as well as mainstream doctors. And thank God for that. Uh, you know, but watch out because they overplay this stuff. They're going to tell you gluten created everything. You know, the fall of man, if you watch. <laughs>